Greetings from the Charter School Office. I'm Albert Bertram, Finance Specialist for the Office. So this document is a review of the audited financial statements. It was included last year in the annual report as a piece of the annual report, but uh, this year we've broken it out into its own separate piece. So uh, instead of having a regional board training, we're bringing videos to all the schools. So um, if you want to compare this to last year, you'll have to look in your annual report we handed out last year. So. Um, this essentially takes the audit and summarizes it into four pages. There's a couple calculations included and a little bit of enrollment data derived from CEPI, which I'll go over all that as part of this video. Um, we hope that you find this beneficial and uh, I'll explain, show where some stuff is located on audit too. So we'll get into uh, the review sheet starting with the statement of net position. So these numbers are all derived from the audit and I'll uh, show you that as a reference total assets is 757,257. So I'll jump to the audit. Here's a statement of that position up here. And then here's the assets, total assets being 757,257. So if you wanted to come back and verify these numbers, you could do that. Um, in fact, we encourage you to do that. But for time, I won't go over all of them. We'll go back to the review sheet. So down here, we have the ending net position. This is the ending net position at June 30th, 2014. The previous net position is the net position at June 30th, 2013. So this is a means of comparison from year, comparing from year to year, excuse me. So down here is the balance sheet information. So here's a general fund current assets and general fund classifications. So these are the assets and the classifications. Again, I'll go back to the audit and show you where these are located. The balance sheet is two pages after the statement of that position, so one, two. Here's where it says balance sheet. Now, if you're if you're a call, I said general fund, so it's important to stay in this column. So it's it's always good to look at these. It's important to look at these food service funds, debt service funds, whatever these other funds are. But uh, for this part of the sheet, we're going to stay right in this column. So here's the assets. I'll scroll in a little bit. Here's the assets. And then down here is the fund balance classifications. So you can match these up again with what's on the review sheet, but we'll go back. Um, so here's those assets you could match up. And then over here we have the fund balance classification. So um, there's five different classifications. I will only go through the two that are pertinent. So um, committed fund balance are amounts constrained to specific purposes by the board to be reported as committed. Amounts cannot be used for any other purpose unless the board takes action to remove or change the constraint. So that's what committed is. And unassigned amounts are amounts that are available for any purpose. These amounts are reported only in the general fund. Now these definitions, if you wanted to know what the other ones are, they are expressly stated in the audit. So you can go look up these definitions pretty quickly in the audit. Um, so that's what those are. Moving up before we head down, this box up here is a, essentially a summary of the activity during the year. So the beginning general fund balance, the total revenues, total expenditures, other financing sources, net change in fund balance, and then the ending fund balance. These, this is again all from the audit. And uh, so below that, we have calculations. Now with, now with the NHA agreement, we understand that these are not going to be what they should would be for other schools with a separate management agreement. So we take that in consideration in our office. But for purposes of review, we uh, thought it was important to still go through what these are. Uh, so I'll go through them pretty quickly. So general fund divided by revenues takes the ending general fund balance, divides it by total revenues, puts it in a percentage. Um, this one uh, essentially does the same thing, except if there is a restricted amount down here, it would subtract that restricted amount out. There isn't a restricted amount, which is why it's the same. Um, General fund divided by expenditures takes the ending general fund divided by total expenditures. This is an indicator that if you uh, read the February 2015 state aid status update, you would see that that is an indicator the state looks at, and it was, I believe, right in the center of page two on the governor's proposals. So you could go look that up. That's uh, just one of their, their performance indicators or something, but uh, our, the charter school office tends to look at this one more so because this one's usually skewed by capital outlays and that kind of thing so it's not as consistent as is this one um, obviously there's uh, things that can skew revenues as well contributions that kind of thing so so we feel it's the best the optimal way is to look at both of these so that's why they're both included on here so below that we have beginning general fund balance divided by or excuse me ending general fund balance divided by beginning general fund balance so that takes this divides it by this 
puts it in a percentage. If it's above 100%, there is a positive net change. If it's below 100%, there is a negative net change. And then as you uh, review these sheets from year to year, you could see if that change, uh, the percent, either below or above 100, is trending upwards or downwards. So that's, that's uh, what this does. So as we scroll down, um, here these four boxes summarize the note section of the audit, which I included a lot of the notes in page four of this review sheet as a reference. So that's where this these boxes are derived from. You'll notice these two are blanks because they're not applicable, or these three are blank because they're not applicable. Um, but I'll go over them briefly. This notes payable is usually associated with short-term borrowing or state aid anticipation notes from the state. So the schools that uh, need that bridge loan to get from um, one school year to the next essentially that's where that's uh, accounted for over here this is uh, usually usually associated with um, a revenue bond or a bond financing for for a school building uh, so schools usually usually utilize this type of financing or a lease which in this case uh, Hamtramck Academy utilizes the leasing method of uh, building financing so that's uh, that's where these are there was one instance that I had to put a bus up here because I didn't have any more room for it, but that's, uh, I specifically spoke to that school about that one. So, um, Moving down here, normally in the audits, uh, there's an expressly stated management fee. That is not the case, which is why I put NA. Um, so that's why, and then NA is not a numeric value, which is why these value errors come up. So I could put like 0 .01 or something, and then uh, these would all be zero. But just to, uh, as a reminder, I left it as NA just to remind that there's nothing expressly stated on the audit that um, when usually there's sometimes usually there is for other management companies. So um, as we scroll down, um, this square footage is uh, the, the square footage from the paper copy of the <laughs> charter contract. So if this is incorrect or updated, if there is an addition or some sort of some sort, let us know. I'll, I'll update this information, and these are all formulas, so it will change all of them immediately. So um, utilizing that square footage, we have uh, revenues per square foot, expenditures per square foot, then the difference. Now you'll notice that 7 minus 6 is not 0, so there is some rounding error here, so uh, that's what that is. It's rounded to the nearest dollar. Uh, payment per square foot is a little bit different. It takes the total lease payment for the year and then divides it by the total square footage. And that's, uh, that's where this $12 is derived from. Now to explain why this uh, is on the sheet, if when I was talking up here about long-term debt being bonded or uh, the leases, this essentially allows me to compare those two, those two different financing methods. If the school utilized a bond, I would include their interest and principal payment on that bond for the year and then divide that by their square footage. And if they use the lease, leasing method, I would just uh, take the lease payment for the year and then divide that by the square footage. So that's where this is derived from. So including both the bonded schools and the leasing schools, the Bay Mills Community College uh, Charter School Office average, so we authorize 42 schools now, the average is $14 for that. So this is actually slightly below the $14 average. So that's, uh, if, you, if you cared about relativity, that's what... Um, that's what the average is. So over here, this is kind of a similar calculation, but it's a little bit different because operations and maintenance encompasses different things. Um, so this takes the line item operations and maintenance down here, and then divides that by the total square footage to come to come out with a dollar amount, this which is nineteen dollars. So the uh, again out of the forty-two schools we authorize, the average is nineteen dollars. So this is like dead on with the average um, in that respect. And then uh, square footage divided by fall 2013 takes the total square footage and divides it by the fall 2013 count, which is the corresponding count to this fiscal year for this audit review. And uh, it's just an indicator you can look at from year to year to see if these, how much space per student there is essentially. So um, I don't know the average to that off the top of my head, but if you wanted that average, I could give it to you. Uh, general fund comparison. This takes the actual at June 30th, 2014 and compares it to the actual at June 30th, 2013. And then the difference is over here. So you can look at the difference from year to year. Um, again, these are both from the audited financial statements. So these are these are actually audited numbers, So which is why there's, it's so good to have them side by side like that. Um, and then you can see the difference over here, the individual difference and then the total difference. So here's the total difference in revenues 
and then you'll see the expenditures below that. So um, you'll notice that some of these have accounting reference numbers in front of them, and some of them don't. So if they were part of my initial template, I left the number I left the numbers on there. But if they weren't, then I had to type them in and add them. And uh, when I did those customizations, I didn't go back and add all the reference numbers. But I will show you a trick um, in in Word. So this is the Michigan Public School Accounting Manual. I took it and put it in Microsoft Word. I believe this is Word 2013. If you wanted to find something, you can come up to the upper right hand corner and push the find button or hold control and then push F. And then you can come over here and type something in. We'll use basic programs um, as an example because I've used that with, as an example for several schools. So you type in basic programs, make sure you're on results, and then you can actually filter through this document. So this will find it in the document, and then you can see the reference number 110. Um, and then here is kind of the explanation of what's included in basic programs, instructional activities including enrichment, designed primarily to prepare pupils for activities as citizens, family members, and workers, as contrasted with programs designed to improve or overcome physical, mental, social, and or emotional handicaps. So I won't continue to read to you, but, but if you wanted to look up the subsidiary uh, accounting things and other accounting things, they're all down here. You can search for them as I just showed you. Um, so it's important to know what's, what these things are. Now, I will tell you one thing before. If you do decide to do this, you cannot come in here and search for broad words like instruction. It's in here way too many times, and Word will tell you that it's in here too many times. So you kind of have to focus your search, but it's a really, it's a really good tool for anyone who's looking to find something quickly. Um, so, that's what, so that's that explanation. So again, you can these are all the expenditures down here. You could go through and compare these from year to year. And these are all directly from the audit, so you can look these up too if you want. Um, so this uh, ending general fund balance should match up to that box in the upper right hand corner of page one. Um, so moving down a little bit further we have the original budget, the final budget, and the actual budget. These are from the audit as well. Over here you'll notice there's a note that I put in here. This is uh, just stating that the original budget is due July 1, which is well before the start of the school year and before which is also before the count date which usually causes a discrepancy between the original budget and the final budget. So this notes on here is a rem reminder to myself and others that uh, that's the case and that's why there's sometimes a large disparity between the original budget and the final budget. So these down here, this budget difference takes the difference between the actual and the final and then the percent change is the difference between the actual and the final. So this is something you could look at from year to year to kind of gauge um, how the uh, budgeting performance has gone from year to year and then uh, when you're looking at that, you can take things in consideration. Was there a large expenditure or something like that that happened that year? So, <clears throat> um, Below that, we have uh, instruction as a percent of revenues. So I'll show you what this calculation is. We'll scroll up. So this takes the total instruction, divides it by total revenues, and then puts it in percentage. So you'll notice that the trend has uh, gone from 56 to 55 to 53. So I'll scroll back up for a second. You'll see that... Uh, Revenues only decreased by 505,000. Well, instruction expenditures decreased by 69,000. So I don't want uh, this to be meant to be an absolute indicator. It's meant to be an indicator to ask a question. So, um, for an example, uh, if a teacher was hired for or was getting paid $50,000, he or she resigned or retired, and a new teacher was hired for say $30,000. That would actually lower these instruction expenditures while not necessarily providing less instruction. So it's important to realize the relationships going on between these numbers. Um, also, um, if I've, I've, one of our schools had their revenues increase pretty dramatically from one year to the next, and they did increase their instruction expenditures r relating to that increase. However, it didn't increase as at a rat as as a quick as a pace. So that ratio actually went down because revenues increased at a faster pace. So it's important to understand what the what the proportional calculation going on there is and that um, it's not meant to be an absolute, it's meant to be an indicator to ask questions again. So that's kind of what all these things are. These, they're just indicators. So if we come back down here, so um, for those who are interested in averages again, uh, our 42 schools, the average is 44%. So this is actually, even though it's slightly declined, it's still above average by 9% uh, essentially. So our average is 44 if you wanted to know what that was. So uh, over here we have revenues divided by fall 2013 and expenditures divided by fall 2013. So that's 
takes the total revenues and divides it by that corresponding fall count again and then the difference. Now this is something you can look at from year to year to see if it's trending upwards or downwards. Again, look for skewing. If there was a large contribution, if there was a um, if there was a uh, capital outlay, any other large expenditure that was included in the current year. So um, we'll scroll down. Enrollment numbers. Uh, these numbers are derived from CEPI. So these ones right here, I'll show you what CEPI is because there's a lot of acronyms in education. So CEPI stands for the Center for Educational Performance and Information. To get to this data, you come down to My School Data, you go through a couple filters of what you're looking for, and then you can see there's a student count, um, free and reduced lunch count, special education count, grad dropout rates. Um, you could see there's a lot of data on this site. So these are the student count information. So here's all the spreadsheets. It actually goes down to 1991, 1992. And then uh, just below that, we have our free and reduced lunch counts, and that's where these are derived from as well. So we'll go back to the audit review sheet. So I dug all those numbers out for you. The last one, is actually an unaudited number I received via Epicenter, which Epicenter is the file exchange program that uh, communicates be, or exchanges files between the charter school and the charter school office. So from that system, I received a document that was uh, called the DS4061, which is the unaudited count data for this fall 2014 count. So this number is unaudited. If the audited numbers change, that number is subject to change. So if you notice, if you're comparing these sheets from year to year, and you notice that that number's changed, that's why. Um, so over here, these are a numeric display of the change from count to count. So this is, a, for our numbers people, a percent change. And then below that, we have um, the graphical display of the data. So this is for our visual people. So we try to... Uh, take everyone into consideration with these calc with these uh, sheets so we hope you uh, enjoy either this or this or both and uh, so that's what that is so moving down we have the free and reduced lunch counts and then over here is the corresponding free and reduced or the free and reduced lunch percentage so that takes the the uh, free and reduced lunch count divides it by the fall count for that year and then puts it in a percentage form so you'll notice uh, Hamtram Academy has actually been 90% or above. Um, and then over here, which I have, I have yet to calculate the average for Bay Mill schools, but if you want, I, I can do that. So that's something I'm, I'm on, it's on my to-do list after I get all these videos done. So, um, and then down here, we have uh, the graphical display of the data. So these, these numbers over here are graphically, dis graphically displayed, again, for our visual people. So down here, uh, page four, this is the note section of the review sheet and it's derived from the notes section of the audit. So this is uh, the, any area, this is uh, dealing with anything debt related, so capital assets, page seven, and then the operating lease, page 16, excuse me, which uh, we talked about on page one, it was on the, in those four boxes there when we talked about the bonding financing versus the leasing financing. So this is the note referencing that, and then if you wanted to look at the specifics in the audit, it's page 16. Below that we have uh, the management company information. Um, this is page 12 of the audit. I won't go through and read all that. However, um, there's, a, there's a note included that says revenues, private sources, NHA represents a contribution granted by NHA for excess of academy expenditures over public revenues available. So if we scroll up, we'll see this NHA private sources. This is, so this is that contribution from NHA. So it's important to note that uh, that this is that NHJ is uh, utilizing or implementing that, and to know what that means. So that's what that is. Um, we didn't go over that as we got to it because I wanted to read that that note down there. So just know what that is and uh, know what it represents. And again, if you wanted to read that specifically, it's on page 12. So uh, that's what that is classified as. Below that, we have um, findings. There's no findings, which is good. Uh, if you care to, if you're interested, out of the 42 schools we authorized, there was eight total findings. Four were, were related to small schools in scope that had lack of segregation of duties, um, or the auditor helped with prepare the financial statements or something like that. So that's what that is. Um, so four, essentially there was four that needed correction out of the eight that were semi-serious. Uh, and they have since been corrected, so kudos to the Bay Mill schools for doing well in relations to findings. Um, below that we have uh, the BMCC notes, which is not 
actually BMCC notes. They're just anything that's uh, not including included in the category of debt or management company. So it's anything else that BMCC felt we should uh, reference, which is why there's just uh, these two notes here. So there's a the net position note, which was on page six, and then a reference to the charter expiration date of 2019 on page 12. So um, this document is reviewed by Mariah Wanick in our office, and it's supposed to say my email address down here, but I'll type it in for you. It will be on, it'll be on your sheet, Albert B at bmcc.edu. That's my email address. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, feel free to email me. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, delivery method and we hope you got some benefit out of the video. Thanks for what you do for the children of Michigan. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.